In Unit 7, we are going to talk about intermolecular forces. These are forces that act between two molecules, as shown here. When you draw them, you will draw them like dots, like this. So this is not, sometimes we call them bonds, but they're not real bonds. They're like attractions between two molecules made out of covalent, ionic, and metallic bonds. So let's look at the introduction first. Um, intermolecular forces um, is another word for covalent bonds. Uh, intramolecular forces is another word for covalent ionic and metallic bonds that make up molecules. And these are bonds inside uh, molecules, whereas today's topic intermolecular, inter means between, uh, international means between nations or countries. So these are forces between molecules. We also call them IMFs. They are used to describe forces of attraction between molecules and ions when they are placed close to each other. These forces keep molecules together forming substances and homogeneous mixtures. For example, when you dissolve uh, sugar crystals which are in the solid state in liquid state water, the sugar molecules, when they dissolve, the molecules, individual ones, come close together to water molecules and hang out next to the water molecules. And they make intermolecular forces attracting sugar and water together. This cause, causes it to dissolve and become a homogeneous mixture. Um, there are three major types of intermolecular forces we will be discussing. London dispersion forces, we call them LDFs. Dipole-dipole interactions, we label them as DD. And hydrogen bonding, although they're called bonds, they're just forces. That's the name they call them. So let's look at uh, some preview stuff, intro stuff. Um, opposite attractions. You may recall that electrons have a negative charge and protons have a positive charge. All neutral atoms have the same number of electrons and protons, so they have a total zero charge. Particles experience an intermolecular force. That means a positive charge of one particle or a molecule is attracted to the attracted to the negative charge of another particle or a molecule. We will talk about such things in this lesson. A positive charge is formed when a particle or region of a molecule is uh, less, uh, has less electron density, while a negative charge is formed when a particle or a region of a molecule has higher electron density. Because electrons, when you have more, they're negative, you become negative. When you have less, you become positive, just like I talked here. Now, electronegative atoms in covalent bonds pull the shared electrons towards them. Remember, they're the greedy hogs we talked about in the, um, the periodic table lesson long time ago. And they cause a dipole or two poles. One is positive and one is negative to occur. A dipole occurs when the area on a molecule with an electronegative atom has a negative charge due to the more electron, more, having more electron density and an opposite area that has a positive charge due to reduced electron density. So remember this. Second topic, the role of intermolecular forces in physical states of matter. When an intermolecular Forces are strong, the molecules or ions are strongly attracted to each other and come closer together. These types of intermolecular bonds are formed in condensed states like uh, solid and liquid. Solid state um, bonds are closer together, that's why they are much compact. These are a little bit far apart. And they are harder to break and you need more energy. For example, if you want to make a liquid go into the gas state or a solid to go into the gas state, you have to provide it with heat. That heat energy is used to break the intermolecular forces and go to the gas state. When the intermolecular forces are weak, 
between molecules um, or ions, then they don't have a strong attraction to each other like in the gas state and they are far apart. These forces are much easier to break because less energy is needed to break them. An example is gas state. So when you need to form a liquid or a solid from a gas state, you must uh, take away energy from them. You have to cool them. So here is a figure of an intermolecular force between this is the same molecule, two, same molecule in two different orientation and the bonds forming uh, the molecule are covalent bonds but the bonds between the two molecules are intermolecular forces. Okay, now let's look at intermolecular forces. The first one we are going to look at are London dispersion forces. And here is a picture of them. You should draw the picture too. Electrons in atoms are in constant motion, as you remember the electron cloud. And in any molecule at any given time, there can be more electrons on one side of that molecule randomly than on the other side at any given moment. This, uh, the side with more electrons will have a temporary negative charge and the other side will have a temporary positive charge. We call this a temporary dipole. LDFs are formed when two neighboring molecules share a weak transient mutual attraction when they are uh, negative and positive line up together. So we don't draw a dotted line because it's transient meaning temporary. They break and make all the time. So. Uh, all compounds have this. You don't have to be electronegative or electropositive. Every compound has these. The more atoms a molecule has, the more LDFs it can have. And these are very weak attractions. They are the weakest of the three. Second topic, dipole-dipole bonds or interactions. You can write interactions here also. These attractions are formed between two polar molecules. That means they have a negatively charged delta minus end uh, being attracted to the positively charged delta plus end of the other, like in hydrogen fluoride molecules shown over here. They are mutually attracted to each other, so they come closer together than plus end and the minus end. We call that a dipole-dipole interaction. These are very strong interactions or bonds, but they are not the strongest. They are stronger than LDFs. Remember electronegative atoms are in groups 7 and 6 mostly, so they pull shared electrons more to their side, causing high electron density or electron concentration when it's closer to them. This is why they become delta minus. And recall, fluorine is the most electronegative of all of them. Uh, last one is hydrogen bonds. They are formed when the non-bonding electrons of nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atoms of one molecule and hydrogen bonds of hydrogen atoms of another molecule are attracted to each other. These are the strongest of the IMFs. So here are the hydrogen bonds. You have non-bonding electrons of oxygen being attracted to hydrogen like this. And just to make sure these are covalent bonds and here is a pair of non-bonding electrons. So oxygen has two pairs, uh, fluorine has three pairs and nitrogen also has one pair. And um, also, you might remember the mnemonic NOF for nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So anybody who has, if this was a nitrogen or a oxygen or a fluorine, you can make hydrogen bonds. The second molecule can be polar or nonpolar. It doesn't matter. So please draw this in your notebook. Let's look at who can and cannot make intermolecular forces. So you ask, are there any dipoles? If the answer is no, then all you have are London dispersion forces. If you have dipoles, 
uh, the hydrogen atoms of one molecule directly bonded to a lone electron pair of a nitrogen fluorine oxygen of another the other if it's yes then you have hydrogen bonds if it's no then you have dipole dipole forces that's how you remember them you must draw this in your notebook too so that you can remember it and remember these are the weakest all substances have these and these are electrostatic attractions between two polar molecules but the molecules must have um, non-metal and metal or hydrogen atoms and here strongest and hardest to break um, between hydrogen atoms of one molecule and a lone electron pair of a nitrogen oxygen or fluorine of the other and the summary I've aligned them in strength so as you go from LDFs to dipoles to hydrogen bonds the strength of the bonds increase meaning they become harder to break there are attractions between two molecules molecules with higher intermolecular forces have high boiling points and melting points you must write this down the strength of the intermolecular force is based on the number and types of IMFs found between two molecules. That means you can have between two molecules multiple types of stuff. Every molecule, whether they are dipole-dipole or hydrogen bonding, they have London dispersion forces too. That's what I mean. So um, write these notes down and then do the exit ticket. Thank you.